How, how was it swapping over to the Lapierre bike? Yeah, it was, yeah, obviously going, because I, the Danny Hart was on the team at the time. And that yep. was basically one of the reasons why I kind of went, because I, Danny was staying here and I was riding with him heaps and I thought it'd be cool to ride with this little English kid, Junior. He was kind of like, just like me, just loved riding his bike and I was like, oh, that'd be cool. I'll go on the team with him. Because obviously getting an offer like this was insane. So I was just like, man, I've got to take it. Like the money was insane. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like, And yet he couldn't match that. Otherwise, I would have probably ended up staying with the guys at Yeti. Yeah. Because at the time, I was like, man, I don't really want to ride for like a French. They were kind of like, you didn't really know. And it yeah. was a bit like they were, I don't know, what what, what could happen? But I was a, my dad kind of was like, hey, you got to take the money, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, we'll go with the money. Like, there was no, uh, being that young, and like getting that amount of money on the table is pretty insane, especially for me at that time. And so, yeah, and I was thinking I was going to be on the team with Danny Hart, so I thought it was going to be pretty sick. Yeah. But obviously things didn't happen and they ended up firing him from the team and just where they went in their separate ways. And then I ended up just riding with another another English kid or Scottish kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we didn't really get on that well. Well, we did, but it was just a bit different. We wouldn't really ride as much together. He wasn't like a that, hard worker like how I was. And, eh? Is that Sam Flockart? Yeah, yeah. He just didn't like the same sort of like grinding like me or riding as much as me. He just, yeah, so we didn't, I don't know. But yeah. it was kind of good. Like the I remember the first race was Fort William and I was still on the old bike. I think it was really bad because I broke my scaphoid uh -huh. in Dunedin at a national round. So I didn't even ride. I didn't even ride the bike at all. So we went, I went to go do testing in San Remo at the start of the season. And then I did one run and I couldn't, because I thought it was, I just thought the, the, the people at the hospital, they thought it was just a sprain. So I was just kept trying to ride, but it hurt so much. <laughs> Yeah. And I ended up, because at the time I was doing heaps of like jet ski, pole um, jet ski. So we'd just go on the surf and it didn't really hurt because you're just, you're yeah. pulling. Yeah. You're not being pushed like on a bike. So I was just doing heaps of that. And I was thinking it was, right, it was a bit sore. Yeah. So you can, and then went overseas thinking, oh, I'll be right testing. And then did one run. I was like, in San Ramo, the roughest track ever. And I was like, I can't even hang on. Yeah. So Laurent was like, okay. So he took me to like a like a real good wrist specialist and I got an MRI and they said it's broken. Right. So I went back home, got like a a pin in it straight away. And then literally within a couple of weeks I started riding because it was just when the, the stitches were healed and I was, it was mint. Yeah. And then, but I didn't really ride much down or pretty much went to Fort William, just had a wrist brace on. I couldn't really hang on and ended up, I think, six. Yeah. On a bike that I'd never really ridden, didn't even yeah. test on. Pretty impressive. And then, and then, yeah, and then the next race was in, this is crazy, like you couldn't even do this now, like to come into like a World Cup and not even ride your bike and then not even like test the new bike or anything. And then the next race, they were launching a new bike that I still haven't even ridden. I don't, I think maybe a couple of laps on it after this new prototype this new bike that was coming out. And I think that's probably when you see me, like the first run or second run, I was just testing this bike at a World Cup, testing a new bike, literally going case of jump. <laughs> the back end snaps in half. The only thing that's holding it together is the chain. Yeah. If the chain would have pulled apart. I would have just got eaten shit and probably broken something else in the season over. Yeah. Your boom. So the, the problem was the aluminium was joint to the carbon so that sometimes I had a few of them do it. So if they weren't glued properly, they'd pull apart. Like burn it always. The yeah, yeah. Uh, always the chain would just hold it together. <laughs> so cool. I was so lucky that the chain was strong enough to hold it together. So I land off the jump, poof, chopper. I was like, fuck. Literally go back down. I've got the like not much practice done. Can you fix the bike? Okay, go up. I think I do like 
maybe a couple more runs on a just put together bike, and then qualifying comes around and I win the qualifying. And I'm like, what the hell? This bike must be good. <laughs> I think the pilot so I won the qualifying, on. thinking like I haven't even ridden much of this bike, literally. And Nico Villiers is there because he designed the bike. Oh, so it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I was like, yeah. And Nico's like, man, your lines are not very good. You need to be doing these lines. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Won the qualifier. Must be all right. <laughs> so he's trying to tell me all this stuff. And and the, he's telling the right. He doesn't tell it to me because he's like, he's, because yeah. oh, I think he's here to me or something or whatever. Yeah, he's, he's but, quite quiet, Nico, isn't he? Unless, you know, he knows you, I guess. Yeah, he didn't really know me yet, but I think after he told me, because in the then in the race, I I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I should be able to win easy, just roll like do well, and but then I think I I ended up fourth in the race, which was, and then that was kind of my whole season really. I I won a lot of the qualifying, and then I'd come down the race, and then just kind of a mistake or thing, and then I'd be like fifth or fourth and third, and and ended up in the overall just behind. Um, G and I think Aaron, yeah, or and I was third, so mm-hmm. I was pretty stoked with that. Still, with like really? just, I guess I kind of did it with the the result from the qualifying, just winning most of the getting good points from qualifying. But it would have yeah. been good to win a few more races that year, and then the season after that, I kind of just went backwards, really. I just tried to figure it out, and I think they changed the bike again on me halfway through the all that. No, we had the good bike, and then they the one they were going to sell, they changed the linkage on it or something, and they just messed it up, and I just couldn't get my head around it. And I'm, then it took like two years riding that kind of worst bike with not really good results until Cam, or maybe one year, and then Cam came on, Cam Cole came on the team, and then. We were like, we need to test to know what we're doing. Nico is not, he doesn't ride like us. He's a light, little, yeah. precise little guy. We are on flat pedals. We needed the support. We are trying to find more ramp. It was just like blow through the travel, the bike all the time because yeah. Nico's really light and he was a different rider than us. And he was like, oh, you need to be riding clip pedals and blah, 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 or whatever. So that's what kind of changed me into riding clip pedals in the end. Well, that's what I, so, I wanted to ask you about that because you know, uh, it you know I, I I'm I've never been at the same level as you and Sam Hill and and other people that have won World Cups on on flat pedals, um, but you know I've ne- I, I've never ever used clips. I just it just feels well you know i've tried them on on a bike just to pedal along like when i first started mm-hmm. but i just didn't like the feel of it and that's what, what i wanted to you know sort of ask you what at what point did you think that hang on a minute i've got to clip in because the majority of people are clipping in it was that, yeah. was that did that come from other people or did, was it your decision in the end do you think i think it was basically my decision just to tidy up my riding because that was the reason why i wasn't winning well it's hard to say, like, because I'd, I'd do well in the qualifying, like, that year, and then when I'd go to push in the race, I'd blow my feet off, or right. that would be the reason why I didn't, like, work, feel like I was couldn't win in the end, because the track would get more rough, and then I'd be, like, trying to hang on, and the, maybe the and the setup wasn't right, really. I was just trying to hang on to maybe something that I had, didn't even set up properly. I was just trying to – and when it was – so like qualifying would be good ruts and everything and then get, you know, dry out or get more blowing out. Because that, that year it was just like every race was wet and was sick, ruts and flats were sick for that. Yeah. Like that's why like when Sam used to like it, you know, we, we like, like those conditions when it's rutty and the tracks were awesome then. You know? well, to ride for everybody. Yeah. Everyone struggles in that stuff. Like, but um, yeah, so then I was thinking, uh, started riding clips and then it kind of, it was good for me because it, I still rode the same, but then it just tidied up my riding a lot, and then I could pedal in the air more. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about pedaling in the air. Where, where, yeah. where did that come from? Because that was a thing when I was a kid. Um, because because yeah. I rode BMX when I was a kid, and then obviously the 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 movie ET came out where you know the the pedaling through the air on the bikes. 
So we always mm. called it an ET. So if there was a double or whatever, you'd pedal in the air. And then yeah. you're the king of that. Like, where did you get that from? I think this is always did it. Like when we'd dirt jump with win, even on my uh, down box, we'd just try and see how low he'd get and I'd pedal through all the jumps and just keep pedaling. Yeah. And I just feel like it's like whole way more speed and we just did laps like that. And it was even with flats, you know, and then I still even remember like if you my run in and when I won in Schlebing, I'm like coming through the finish, I'm just still pedaling in the air. Yeah, it yeah. looks amazing. <laughs> I just I don't know, I just ADD endless energy maybe and just want to keep sprinting all the time. And so now I just feel like it's quite like a release. Yeah. But on the and just to get you that position free a bit because you're just so it's just a stagnant squat you're in for so long on the yeah. track. Yeah. So like a little little bit of movement frees the body up. Yeah. But now now with the the the, the um obviously running the pinion I don't need to I just shift whenever in the corner I don't need a pedal. It's quite good that. Yeah uh, I, I wanted to ask you about the, the pinion um a bit you know um definitely in a, in a minute but I just, you know, so from from what, you know, you rode for the for Lapierre team, Laurent's team, and then, you know, Loic came into that team. Was the, was, was the dyma, dynamics of that team and, the, and the, the amount of testing that it looks like they do and everything else that goes into that programme, was that different back then than it is now, would you say? You know, was there, was there, was there less testing and... You know the knowledge passed on to you. Do you think than than say low it gets now? I think it was because it was because of me and Cam we started that like because Laron was like oh we don't have the budget to test and whatever. Well, like, we need to test a lot more, and then we started testing and then we got the results. I think Cam and I got on the podium. I think he was, I was, he was fifth or I was fourth or something and like that. Yeah, we started testing, and he was like, "Oh, it's working." So then he started. We did test more, and then we did good results again. And then we got to the bike to where it was like maxed out. We needed to change the linkage, and he was like, oh. "And then they started pushing lap here, and then they seen like all the testing. It's actually working." And then Jack really liked it too because he was like getting bored of just working on the bike. He liked he liked working on the suspension. So we Jack loved it. So we'd call them a jack box because, you know, black box suspension. Yeah. So jack, jack would take um, another set of forks to rock shock because they'd be like, oh, you guys are never getting your stuff serviced here. And Jack would be like, oh, you're not touching my stuff. <laughs> so oh, he'd wow. take a, just a, a, another set of um, suspension, like the random ones, they're just the stock ones and they'd get like them to service them because <laughs> he didn't want them to service the ones that he'd, because they the rock shop guys never liked it if you're tuning the stuff inside. You wanted the the black box stuff. Yeah. So Jack was doing all our stuff, and yeah, he it, that's when he started to like it. And then obviously now to what the level it is with the week, you know. So it's kind of cool because it's more like in house. You know, Jack got to the point where I'd be like, oh, I don't really like this or whatever, and he just knew. So it was such a good thing for me having him as a mechanic, and that's what the week's got. You know, it's so easy working together, and like we started. I think the last couple of years, that's when we started with the telemetry okay. on the stuff. But I never really rode the bike too much because Jack was like, I'll be riding the bike. And I was like, this bike doesn't feel right to me because we'd have two bikes. Yeah. He was like, it's the same bike. And I was like, nah, man, this thing smells smaller. So I got out the measuring tape and he's freaking got me riding a medium bike size bike <laughs> so i think i was on like larissa's frame or something a smaller frame and i was like man i'm not riding this thing it's fuck that's why i feel weird so i was like <laughs> I was going to waste the time at the start but then we figured it out and it was good overlapping like stuff with the week like when we started figuring it out because then we could see like our breaking points and what the week was doing and whatever but yeah it was definitely awesome having those guys like especially the week even like his earlier days when he was a junior, just how, like, what he knew from such a young age, like, his first ever race in Fort William, he was just so gutted. I mean, he crashed, like, me and Cam were walking the track 
like what because it was like track walk. So he went and watched the juniors, and he was qualifying, and he's like, "Oh, it might have been his race." I don't, no, maybe it was qualifying, and he didn't even qualify, so he crashed. You know, right in front of us, and we're like, "Get up! What are you doing?" And then he literally crashed again. And he was just like, and he got—I don't think he even qualified or something. And he was just in tears, and he just gutted his first race like that. Yeah, and like seeing him like kind of grow from that, and then doing so well, and then winning—I think he won pretty much everything after that. From on, yeah, that's pretty cool. But to be like to be with him, and I would see him to be like such a good mate of mine, and then kind of being like my younger brother on the team, and yeah. then it got to like the point where. I was the old dog, so I had to leave, and they didn't want me anymore. So <laughs> they just wanted the younger talent. And so, you know, obviously with with Loic, you know, I guess the um, yeah, everybody's pretty cool that, that races down a lot. I think there's there's not a lot of arseholes or people up, up their own arse or whatever. But you know, back back before you were doing it, kind of when. Um, in the era that I did a bit of racing and, you know, there was Steve Pete and Nicholas Vullio and Sean mm. Palmer. It was like, you know, the Americans and the, and the English were kind of always bad mouthing the French that said, you know, the French were always seemed to be really professional. They had incredible bike riders. I think it was more a bit of jealousy than, than other things. But I, I think then when the era of Lowick came along and Lowick's now, super cool super chilled and you know there's him and amory and you know they're like the french are cool now i think that was mm. probably you know kind of helped by you guys like loic learned from you guys because you were his idols and yeah you know that's he, what he, he says that's what he always says like he had the choice to ride with fabian yeah and he was like but fabian was like his idol like like really good too like but he didn't want to go that way because he's seen like how everyone kind of hated the French. So he yeah. was like, I want to go with Kiwi Sam because it's going to be way more fun and maybe I'll yeah, probably cool won't do it as well, but <laughs> I'm going to have way more fun doing it. And I think it kind of rubbed off on him a bit. Like, And it's kind of, I think it's a better way in a way. Like, Obviously Fabian, like crazy what he can do. and But then look at the week now, he's the fun guy, but he can still do that as well. So it's bred up in him. Yeah. Like it's insane, like. Definitely. I was obviously I was listening to that podcast with him and the, their their whole street of their where they lived on is just all champions really. So you just brought up in that environment. So you just you all you know is winning. Yeah. And you and that that same group is the same as like Loic and Larice and their whole club in in the south of France. You know they push each other. Yeah. Like Larice and Loic were just neighbors yeah. down the road and they grew up together and then on yeah. the team together. And, yes. Yeah. Crazy. Definitely cool, man. It's you see it like I guess that's how why like me, Brooke, Wynn, Eddie, George and all that, we race together and that we're pushing each other and they were looking at obviously me or whatever the older guys and that pushed them up to do well and I don't know, and then we had no juniors for a long time in New Zealand until obviously now we've got some fast boys coming through like Lucky and Toto and Tyler as well. So there's a lot of kids coming there to freaking maybe I need to retire. Finally, that's why I was staying. I was hanging on because there was no other Kiwis. Now <laughs> they're coming. Well, you know, when when your time came to an end at, at Lapierre, was that was that hard for you? Was it, did did you see that mm. coming or was it kind of just sudden? Yeah, it was real hard, like. Even Laurent didn't want to lose me, but it was just the way that LaPierre wanted it to go. They just didn't have the money to keep us on. They were trying to push to keep Larice and Loic. Right. And then it was me and Emily. We had to go. We go. So, yeah, it was real. Like, Laurent was crying. Yeah. I was crying. You know, yeah. it was, it was more like a family of five years. Yeah. With your mates. Like, Laurent was like my dad, you know. Yeah. He was such a good person. And he still is a good person. He helps me out with everything. Yeah. Like, all well, those guys came to my wedding the week and everyone, they're just like, they fit my family, you know? Of course. So it was, that was like probably some of my best years racing, you know, with those guys. So, 
even though they were French, they were more like, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're traveling with French people, it's really hard, you know, because they speak French, but they'd always try and keep me involved. Like the best years was when I was hip with Cam Cole because it was like Kiwis, we had a Kiwi yeah. mechanic and him. Yeah. Because obviously like when I started with Jack, he didn't even speak English really. Yeah. I'd be like, Jack, can you do this on my bike? And he'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, no, man, it should be a no. He'd be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But everything was always good. He'd be like, right, Jack, you think I should do this? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, it took him probably like he really didn't understand me for like most of my career. But it just worked out. He just figured yeah. it out, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I remember driving like places with him. It would just be me and him in the car, like at the start of it. And we just couldn't even like really talk to each other. We'd just be like, or oh, put music on. Yeah. 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 